currency today's video is a fun one I do this every now and again I thought it was time to do it again as you can see we are here at Atmex's website I am a partner with Atmex and being such I've you know I think I need to do my due diligence in showing off one of the coolest features that they have and one of the reasons I love Atmex so much this is called the precious metals portfolio tool so what we're looking at here is all of the assets that I have logged into Atmex. So though almost all of my purchases have been from Atmex, there are a couple that haven't. And that's one of the cool features is that I can literally search for any coin that I have in my collection, upload it here, and it will log it for me. So being that I only spend $100 a month on silver to prove that every single one of you can do this, uh, over the time that I've done this, we have a total asset value of $4,300, and the cost of me purchasing all of that has been $3,100, so over $1,000 in value. Now, how does this website assess value? Well, basically, it takes all the coins that you have, and it says, well, if we were selling those today, what would we sell them for? So is it the most accurate means it's not but it does tell you you know a decent window probably plus or minus a couple of dollars of what you would get on the open market you'll also notice over here that 99.86 percent of this is silver and 0.14 is gold and that's because i bought that gold back uh, last time i purchased we then go down here we see that gold my current value of that gold back is five dollars and ninety seven cents i paid six dollars and twenty seven cents for it and for the silver i also have an idea here we went over those numbers we also get the quantity i have a hundred and eleven coins of silver and that equals up to 106 ounces. And the reason is, is because some of those things are not quite an ounce. Let's say a mercury dime or uh, a half dollar or something like that. So now we get to really go into some cool things of this feature. This is my first page. So it's going to go from the metal first, as we see the Wyoming gold back. We see that it's one thousandth of an ounce. We see that what I paid for it and its value but then we get into all the silver right so this is going to show you the highest value obviously we have the two value silver black flag Queen Anne's Revenge uh, and we have that this announced we know that I paid twenty six dollars and seventy eight cents and valued it a hundred and nine dollars so we're gonna just go through this list really quickly because I have a hundred and eleven coins and kinda go through some outliers Obviously, a lot of this first page will be outliers because these are the ones that have shot up in value the most. But we're going to look for ones that kind of you scratch your head about one way or the other. It grew really, really well or it did not and try to figure out why. So here we have the Zwijik uh, shipwreck coin. It's a great coin. Uh, this is one that was given to me as a gift from the Bullion Now folks. So as you can see, it's a beautiful coin. Um, it is triangular in fashion, absolutely ornate. And what's cool is that you can actually hold it upside down and it will be two different scenes. So I get why that one is very expensive. I spent really no dollars, but it makes you put in some type of acquisition cost. So I put one dollar. Once again, it was a gift from Bullion Now, and I'm incredibly grateful. Uh, not just for that interview, but also for the friendship that I've struck with their guys over these last couple of years. Next, we have Armenia, which is uh, a European nation, and they do a really cool arc. Looks like this. And here's something else to notice. We see that it's currently out of stock, but what's cool is when you log your coins in here, you can still see them uh, in case you forget what they look like. It's a very popular series, as you can see. This is $69.57. I paid $20 for it. Uh, the Great Britain Year of the Rat is a lunar series. We know that the lunar series holds value. It's the prettiest rat coin I've ever seen, which might be a low bar, but it is valued at 66 currently. And we know that with silver being up here, $24.57, uh, that was where you get your basis for it. Libertad's we know hold value. That's $64. I spent $22. We have a Mandala Warthog, which is not the prettiest coin, I'll be honest with you. 
there's a lot of negative space that you see in that area um, but it is you know a valuable coin because if you look down here boom 10,000 worldwide and it is in a series where they take multiple African animals and do the same type of function with the mandala print the Great Britain Royal Arms is a classic coin. I didn't think they were going to hold this much value, but as we see, we pay $21, and it's almost at 60 bucks right there. If you don't know what that looks like, here he is. Pretty cool coin overall. It once again has the really cool radial pattern, these dots that create kind of a geometric function. I don't know how else to explain it than that, but beautiful coin. We have the Australian kookaburra. We know that these hold value like crazy. Uh, mine was the 30-year anniversary kookaburra that I have, which this side of it's not necessarily overwhelmingly beautiful, but when we go to the other side, I absolutely love this. You have the queen who is still present, but she's not the focus. We have the kookaburra down here. Uh, we have the representation of the 30 years. Just a beautifully done coin. It's still to date is probably my favorite kookaburra I've ever seen. Go to page two. We have a Britannia. Um, this Britannia is set it is fifty four dollars and fifty cents. It's really not all that pretty, but it is older, and maybe that's why this is the older Britannia. It's decent um, when you look at it. But what I love about it, and you can't see it here, is on the rim. You actually have a snake privy. I bought mine as a random uh, random Britannia, and they sent me the 2013 with a snake privy. So it's probably actually valued higher than that because it has that privy. Here we have the Australian Lunar Dog. I can't stand this coin, but I get it. It's a Perth Mint Lunar Series coin. So as far as that goes, that makes sense. I think it's kind of ugly. There's a lot of negative space. It looks like you just dragged clip art and put it in random places to me it's just underwhelming but it does command quite a big price which tilled eagle very very strong series okapi very strong series you see i even paid forty dollars for these coins and they're still higher uh, they're not always like that i do lose money sometimes when it comes to the value of these coins and what i paid for them but over time i think they'll all uh, exceed what i paid for them Silver Koala, this is the 2022. It's a beautiful, beautiful coin. Uh, the White Tiger of Nui, this is one a lot of people don't know, so we'll take a look at it. It's a really cool coin. It highlights the feng shui of Asian culture. So there's different directions and different colors and materials that all go into account. You can watch any of the videos over these coins that I've made. I've made over 100 videos on these. So if you see a coin you like, you can either comment below and I'll send you the link or uh, you can go onto my channel page and find it. Here we have the Chi Wu. This is an absolutely fantastic coin. As you can see, it's right at 50 bucks. The Comsco Mint of Korea makes some of the most beautiful, beautiful coins. The background here, it doesn't give you justice, but these are clouds. And when you rotate it in the light, the softness of them really really makes a cool cool effect and then on the back side we have the security right here that when you change the direction you can see the nines in it and then it disappears and then you have once again this beautiful ornate background they call it one clay uh, that's the I guess word for their currency but I would say the Comsco Mint puts out some of the best stuff around the world the Silver Phoenix is another one that I think is just top-notch right there we have a beautiful phoenix carrying the orb in its mouth a security feature that goes away whenever you look at it at a different angle and on the back you have the double phoenix uh, right here absolutely beautiful beautiful coin i loved making that video as well american silver eagle comes here they have a 2014 it's at 46 49 i know they're kind of crazy in value right now uh, but apparently my 2014 and my 2021 are at the same value according to this. You notice a big difference in what I paid back then though. Uh, I bought this probably in 2019 or 2020 and I paid $20 for an American Silver Eagle. Oh, to have those times back. I go to page three, we have the Irish Red Deer, which I loathe because Ireland doesn't necessarily have a whole, whole lot to do with 
uh, this area of Africa, but I get that it sells. And it's really not the best design. Once again, you see all the negative space around it. I, I just don't like it. Uh, but I did buy it, and the reason I bought it is because this. 5,000 coins worldwide, and it was the first of a series. And so I thought, well, this will probably be something that rises in value, so I'll you know, buy one and just kind of see what happens. And we're right. It did rise in value. We're at $44.54. So if I were to cut you know, a coin from my list, this one would be on my list to cut. 2015 Somali Elephant. Uh, Somali Elephant's an amazing series. I actually got rid of this one, and by got rid of, whenever I had 1,000 subscribers, I had a giveaway, and the uh, subscriber, Mr. Kellogg, ended up winning, and so though I did love this coin, I had to send it his way, um, which is okay because I have another one from this series in my collection, but these change every single year in the artwork. It's gorgeous. Um, and it's just one of those things that when I think about silver coins from Africa, the Somali elephant is probably one of the top ones that I think of that in the Krugerrand. We have the silver koala with rooster privy. This is my favorite koala uh, that I've seen. Absolutely beautiful. And one of the reasons is because the koala spends so little time on the ground. And here we are with a koala on the ground. So I find that it's probably going to be more rare of a scene. Uh, we also have the very subtle ridge in the background of mountains, things that you don't really pick up on unless you see it in your hand. And then, once again, the rooster privy there in the moon. I think that's an awesome touch. Let's keep on moving. The Rwanda pelican, pretty awesome. The proof-like equatorial guinea giraffe. This is one that shot up in value really quickly. I bought this coin, and within a couple of months, it was already 5 or $6 higher uh, in value. And my guess is because it's proof-like and because our mintage is 15000 uh, This is the first coin, I think, from Equatorial Guinea, which is another reason why I bought it, is because it's a country that I did not have represented in my collection. But yeah, a good coin that has jumped in value. The Netherlands Restrike. This is a uh, series where they go back into their ancient coinage and they basically restrike that image onto a one-ounce coin. It's at $42. It is one of my favorites in my collection because of how historically accurate it looks like. Uh, it really looks like it was struck a thousand years ago, basically. I absolutely love them, uh, and I actually bought another one, which you'll see later in this series, that, <coughs> excuse me, that is a different version of this called the Ducat Rider. Mast Owl is sitting at 41 bucks. We have a Peace Dollar, uh, which is one of my favorite coins. This is one of those that's not quite an ounce. It's 0.773 of an ounce. It says it's currently valued at $40. This is the first coin, silver coin, I ever had. Uh, my grandmother gave it to me as a child and is what kind of set me on this path. So if you like the things that I do on my channel, you can thank this coin right here for igniting that. Lunar Pig, once again, not a big fan of it. It's the same type of Perth Mint uh, situation where it looks like they just dragged on clip art and left it to be in random places. Um, but now what they're doing in their Lunar Series is fantastic, so I'm not saying that I hate the Perth Mint. I'm just saying that these are not my favorite coins that they've put out. The Australian Zoo Cheetah, great series, highlighting animals from their zoo. The Bull and Bear, this one came to me uh, with a little bit of an issue. There's kind of a bluish hue. I, I, I guess it's called toning. Uh, bluish hue that's basically covered the entire coin. That's the only time that's ever happened where I've received a coin that's already toned, I guess. Uh, but either way, it's uh, you know not really necessarily my favorite coin. I don't think it's all that great. Um, so if I were to put it on a chopping block, this would once again be one of the coins that I send. Hawksbill Turtle. This is a awesome world bullion coin that I think doesn't get the respect it deserves. It is beautiful, 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 and I love the way that the shell has kind of the tribal patterns that you would find in the Pacific region. Gorgeous coin. All right, the Anuk Shook right here. These are coins that are Canadian that, you know, a lot of people like the maple, and I don't mind the maple. But I find that a coin like this does such a better job because you still have the maple, 
but you have something else, right? You've put in the Vancouver Olympics at this point. You have Native American artifacts in the Anukshuk. So I just think it's a better version of a maple. And we'll see another maple, uh, the Thunderbird maple, that does a lot better job when it comes to the obverse of the coin. And something that I think should be a bigger trend is trying to get elements of the culture in which your coins come from on both sides of the coin. Lunar Year of the Ox, this is probably the best lunar series, if not tied for the best. Uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous series coming from Australia. This is Royal Australian Mint. So it has the river that they had to cross to get to the Jade Palace. It has the cool crescent moon look to it. It, it really does well. And then we go to the obverse. You see all 12 animals in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So you notice right now that we're on the rabbit, which means next year is a very important year in the Asian culture as we get to the year of the dragon, uh, which is huge for them. So that'll be cool to see a bunch of dragon coins hit the market. Tokelau Flying Fish. This is a low mintage series. It's not the most beautiful per se, but it is. Uh, really really interesting they take their local wildlife and put them on coins I have this one and I have a lionfish from this series they are low mintage see if I can find it on here I think it's 10,000 yeah 10,000 coins uh, and that helps drive up the price as well so you can see that that's 40 bucks right there Krugerrand we all know the Krugerrand we have the Barbados silver trident this is kind of the flagship coin of Barbados it has their trident on it and it has their coat of arms on the other side every year it changes just a hair and there are some that have a privy kind of down in this area of a pineapple which are really really cool morgan silver dollar of course as you can see i paid 39 dollars it's valued at 37 so i do lose you know based on market fluctuation on occasion the Alderney Puffin, one of my favorite coins. St. Kitts and Nevis uh, Silver Pelican as part of the EC8 series. Anytime, whoops, sorry, anytime that you see this obverse, you know that this is one of the EC8, which is a uh, deal that they struck where the eight nations of the EC8, basically uh, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, will put out their bullion coins. It changes every year. They're minted by the Scottsdale Mint in Arizona. If you want to know those countries in the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, we have Anguilla, Antigua, and Barbuda, Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. So every year you can look to eight new designs. And I absolutely love Caribbean silver. I think it's one of the most underlooked and undervalued silver areas of the world. Next, we have Barbados Silver Pelican. That's another wildlife series that they do. Uh, the Somali Wildlife Leopard. They have leopards every year, just like they have elephants. New Guinea Bird of Paradise. Beautiful, beautiful coin. Tokelau's Equilibrium. These are always cool. The things coming out of the Pressburg Mint on behalf of Tokelau. This is one that when you rotate it, you see this kind of change in that yin-yang imagery. Uh, and they do a really good job because they transfer many of the elements from the front to the back, as you can see in these wavy lines. Beautiful series, beautiful coin, uh, and they have a low mintage of 30000 on this series, but they take these intangibles and make cool coins. So like uh, the Terra, which is about nature, equilibrium, things you really can't touch the form of. Here is the Lunar Tiger of Rwanda. We have a panda. This was given to me by a viewer, actually. Sent this in the mail to me, and boy, <laughs> my uh, heart went crazy. I just remember getting a box in the mail at my P.O. box, which if you want to send something to my P.O. box, uh, let me know, and I can send you that information. But yeah, I pulled out this from a viewer because they had watched a video about how I didn't really want to support silver from China, given the current situation. Uh, so I wasn't going to buy it, but if I ever was given one, I would love it. Uh, but I just wasn't going to invest my own money in it. And sure enough, in the mail, I got a silver panda. So viewer, you know who you are and you wish to stay anonymous, which I'm absolutely okay with. 
but yeah, that's the panda that I got, and I think it is absolutely beautiful. And for the first time, actually a week ago, I got to see a panda in person. So that was a really cool experience. I got to actually see four pandas in person. So I'd never seen one in real life, and now I have something to remember when I look at this coin. Cook Island Silver Bounty, one of the best boat coins on the market right there. Absolutely beautiful, and nautical themes are always in. So if you see one, grab one. Granada Octopus, this, the Bhutan Silver Lunar Rabbit. This is my favorite lunar series, personally, and that's because it takes the paper art form, which is found in Asian culture, and it uh, highlights that form on the film, obvious, or not on the film, sorry, on the uh, coin. Obviously, we have the Kingdom of Bhutan's little imperial logo there. Beautiful, beautiful coin, beautiful series. I absolutely adore it. If I were to collect one series, it would be this one, and that's because in Bhutan, they are still so traditional that this means so much to them. It's their biggest festival every single year. Classic. Barbados Seahorse, classic coin there. It's once again one of their wildlife series that they do. Barbados being probably my favorite Caribbean nation when it comes to their silver coins. The Philharmonic, we all know the Philharmonic. It is phenomenal. Uh, one of the most historied coins that we have. And Austria in general, if this page will load, there it goes. Austria in general, uh, I think we don't pay enough respect for their influence in silver. And so that's one that I think everybody should have in their collection. And usually they're a lower premium than many of the world bullion coins. Silver Kangaroo, these are actually on sale right now. I'm seeing them for $29. So if you would like a Australian Kangaroo, go to Atmex and you can see them for $29 currently on their website. This one is out of stock because it's a 2019. Serpent of Milan is gorgeous coin. Silver elephant for Somalia. This is the elephant I have currently in my collection. Looks like that. It's beautiful. There is one problem though. They say that this is an acacia tree. Obviously it's not because of that leaf being absolutely different. Um, that's just a little thing. This back here looks like an acacia tree, but this definitely is not. So you always got to make out, make sure that your descriptions are taken care of. And my guess is why that is, is that this is minted by the Bavarian Mint for Somalia. And in that area of the world, this is a very standard tree. Uh, in fact, this is a tree that they highlight uh, in one of their series. So just a small little detail, uh, things that I catch, but not a big deal. New A, this is a brand new one I picked up, the Czech Lion. This is the Thunderbird Maple. This is the one that I was talking about. This is my favorite maple that I own. So that's your reverse right there. You notice you have your little maple leaves, which gives us homage, right? You have your Native American Thunderbird here, and this is going to be once again for the Olympics when it came. Beautiful imagery. And then we go to the front, we have the Queen and we have the Anukshuk in the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. So that is my favorite maple that I own. Uh, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Republic of Ghana Leopard. We have the Diving Paradise, the Flamingo, the Sioux Indian Chief, gorgeous coin. You're starting to see right here that we're getting a balance of kind of what I paid for the coins and what they're worth currently today. So as that time goes further and these are harder to find, this should tick up a little bit so that even when I paid $36 for a coin, such as this, that it will still be on the positive side. Time seems to work in our advantage on these types of coins. The Anguilla Lobster, which for many of you know I disdain because they chose the wrong species. We have the Cameroon Dragon, the Fiji Great Wave. This is one of my favorite coins of all time as well because it takes classic art from the Edo period in Japan. This is from the 50 views of Mount Fiji, uh, which happened in that time frame. And, and you get that type of amazing artwork in your own collection. It is absolutely amazing. So Hokusai was the uh, artist in that time. And in Japan, they literally shut off their borders for generations. You could not leave and you could not come unless you were like fishing or things like that. And so what you had was a cultural mecca. The, the nation was just 
steeped in its own culture and nobody else influenced that culture so you had really 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 cool elements uh, in this scenes uh, artwork from Mount Fuji which is right there is one of the great things that came from that so really really cool period let's keep on going all right, so we have the Rum Runner. We have Australia Beneath the Southern Sky. This is a really cool series right here. And you notice there's a privy right there of a platypus. They've been putting privies on these coins. Uh, really, really fantastic coin, the way the light plays off of them. So that's one that I highly recommend if you can get your hands on for sure. And it's right about what I paid for it. Uh, this is an angelfish coin where they chose the wrong species. This is a... Pacific angelfish for a Montserrat coin, which is in the Caribbean, uh, which, you know, it is a beautiful fish, but what I don't understand is why choose a fish that is from a different part of the world when you literally have beautiful angelfish that are on the reefs right outside your nation. Don't ask me, but that is absolutely something that happened. Here in the peacock, we have the Parasolophus dinosaur coin. This is one that is phenomenal. This would be another coin that I think you have to have in your collection. That's a blue marlin. Uh, you see all this splashing and things going on. The way the light plays off that is fantastic and you have this rippling effect along this border and when you go to the front you get the queen floating in this really calm current and it the way it plays off the light is just fantastic. I can't even describe it. But yeah that's one that I would say is definitely worth your investment if you can get one. Uh, and I believe every year they reissue these and they don't change the artwork, So, uh, which is great. When you have fantastic artwork, you don't necessarily need to change it. Uh, but yeah, that's one that I would look into. The Leopold, Australian 825th Anniversary Mint. It's a great coin. Uh, we have Wiener Neustadt, or Wiener Neustadt, as they would say over there. Silver Samurai, that's going to be, uh, Fuku, not Fukushima, what's his name? Oh, Kayamori, yes, Kayamori the Samurai, really interesting story about him and how he was haunted in a dream. Cicero Parrot, the Oriole, all standard here. This is a Silverback Gorilla. New South Wales, this is a beautiful, beautiful coin. I think that's worth everybody getting. Uh, this may be my favorite Australian coin or, or close to it now that I have a few more in my collection, but I think it's balanced. I think that it has so many different textures and elements and it just really pops. It, it's just fantastic. And every year they do a different, I guess, region or province of Australia. This one is New South Wales and I just picked up another one. I am shocked a little bit that the value is only at $33. I think that in time that will probably jump maybe when the series is over. Uh, but I would put this up with the Queen's Beast and anything that I've seen on a series. I just think it's that well done and fine tuned. Silver Valiant, one of my favorite coins of all time. Absolutely gorgeous. I bought a random year, as you can see here. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic coin from Great Britain uh, and is one of my favorites. The video on that was really fun to make too as we went into the, the history and culture of that tale with St. George. Mandrill, we have Laos Tiger, the British Virgin Islands. These are ones that shoot up in value um, because they are, as you can see here, reverse cameo. So right now you can buy one for $33 which is absolutely something I would look into because what I see is within two years those will be around 40 bucks uh, as far as the value if not higher. War Elephant is a cool coin. Um, here is the Queensland coat of arms. So this is another one in the series. Absolutely gorgeous. Once again we have the Merino sheep here. We've got some looks like wheat. Cool bird. I haven't done any research on this yet so I'll be making a video on it not too long from now, just check that out. Is that not just fantastic? Golly. So that'll be a fun one to make. I, It's hard. I might even like this one more than my New South Wales, but I'll have to stare at it uh, a little bit longer to make that determination. We have the 
Great Horned Owl. This is a 2014 Royal Canadian Mint coin. Really cool coin. Some generic silver bars, which I bought fairly cheap, and it says it's currently being sold on their website for $33. Magnum Opus. This, These are outliers. I don't know why this is only $31. If, you're, if you don't have one of these, you need to just go out and buy it. It is one of the coolest coins there is. So many cool layers, so many cool uh, elements to it. Definitely worth your time. Just gorgeous. The Terra, the Kronos, this is another fantastic one in the series. This one's out of stock. This one is fine-tuned. It is uh, one of the most delicately struck coins I've seen. It, it just, there's no fading. And when you zoom in, uh, you don't see a whole lot of feathering or anything like that where the coin has been struck. It's just fantastic. The Vivat Humanitas, this one might be one of my favorites as well. All of these little elements in the background, really, really cool. It takes away from the negative space. Just gorgeous. We have all these alchemic symbols here. We go to the other side of the coin. We carry over a lot of those symbols from back to front. Just fantastic. Fantastic. And those are Pressburg Mint that does that. Uh, we have Robin Hood, Sumatran Elephant, another one from the Mandala series. So I bought this one for $31. We saw that the Warthog shot up in value. I bought this one not too long ago. So my guess is that it will shoot up in value as well, especially since we don't see crocodiles a lot on coins, just like we don't see the Warthog. Uh, but the other ones that they do, like lions, uh, we see those a lot. I just picked up this one from Sierra Leone. I had nothing from Sierra Leone, so this is one that I had to get. We have King Tut himself and a really, really cool coat of arms. So that'll be a fun video to make to dive into that coin. The Nui Athenian Owl. This is one that I think is just fantastic. I get why it's cheaper in value. That's because it's mass produced. This, you can see on this poker chip tile on the outside, it, it's uh, stackable, but it has the Athenian Owl, which is one of the most amazing nods to historical coinage that is one of the coins that we would have seen a long time ago uh, that really was over the entire area of the Greek province when they ruled the world you would have seen them all over so really cool nod and then we go to the other side we have that same antiqued rippling in the background cool coin and something that I think is I know it's overproduced and all of that but it's still one of my favorite coins in my collection we have the Robin Hood from the Austrian 825th anniversary. We have the Cameroon Cheetah. This is the other restrike from Netherlands. I expect this one to jump up in value. Really cool looking artwork there. Nod to history. And then we have the Royal Seal here. This is going to be a little bit further down the timeline version of art from the first Netherlands coin that I have. Tokelau Lionfish. This is the Maltese Cross. Beautiful coin. I just did a video over this. Uh, I think that in a couple of years, if it is minted properly and with a giant quantity, then it could end up being a maple type world bullion coin, which is phenomenal to think about. The One of the most important coins in the history of silver coinage is right here. This is the Thaler. Absolutely gorgeous. 1780, though it says 1780 there, they're really not sure exactly when um, your particular coin would be minted because after uh, Maria Teresa died in 1780, they loved her so much that they just made sure that every coin from there on out was struck 1780. Um, let's see, the Columbian Expo. This is probably up there with the top coins in my collection, and I know it's only a half dollar. But there's so much history. Uh, if there's one video about the history of coins that I would want you to watch, it's the one over this video. There's so much about world culture and world history that happened in the striking of this coin that is just fantastic. So please, please go watch that video. We have 
a silver five cents Canadian, and we have a mercury dime and a one tenth ounce silver spade. So that is my current holdings. Remember, I only spent a hundred dollars a month, and I was able to create my entire collection. And that really wasn't even every single month. I would say out of a year on average, it's seven months out of the year that I spent on coins for a couple of years. And I have this amount of diversity. And that's a real testament because I bought every single coin on here except for one order from Atmex. Every single one of them. And they have, in my mind, the best diversity uh, for the type of collecting that I like to do, which is why I like them. I know that some people say, hey, well, their premiums are higher, and I get that. But they also have, when I looked into them, a huge uh, facility in Oklahoma City. They have a giant array of employees and things like that. So they have to cover their expenses uh, and differently than a smaller website that has smaller overhead and that type of thing. So I really don't have a problem with it. And I know that if I look at Atmex, I'm liable and more likely to find coins that aren't even available on most other platforms. So that's why I absolutely love them. Uh, if you want to buy anything from Atmex and you want to support my channel at the same time, there's a link in the description on how to do that. But this is who I trust my dollars with. And, you know, if you don't, that's completely okay. But that's just, you know, my two cents on uh, one of the coolest features of Atmex, which is that precious metals portfolio tool that we just went over. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. And please remember to stay classy and current with the culture of currency.